Every morning, millions of Americans tune in to drive time radio legend Elvis Duran. On this morning, our Morocco is behind the wheel. You seem remarkably calm. I mean, this is a really big show that's about to go on. It is. This is sort of our Super Bowl of the year. All right, let's get it started. If the annual Jingle Ball at New York's Madison Square Garden is the Super Bowl right, of holiday concerts, then Elvis Duran is in the head coach role. It's pretty hot out there. It's coming in hot. From introducing acts to mingling with pop princesses. Sabrina Carpenter, everyone. And interviewing rock royalty. Share, everyone. It's share. On this day, this Elvis is king. Good night. I'm not a camera guy. I'm a radio guy. Yeah. This yeah. is this is a a different day for me. If you don't recognize his face, you may know his voice. Happy Tuesday. It's a busy day. Since 1996, the 60 year old disc jockey has been host of Elvis Duran and the Morning Show. What is wrong with taking chances in life, you people? The country's most popular top 40 morning program. I can't believe it's been 30 years because it's been nothing but fun. Every day, millions of listeners across America wake up to Duran and his crew dishing about music. I love the song. Pop culture. Did she just wake up and go, they, Beyonce? Pretty much whatever is on their mind. Are you really going to roll Mo out of the studio? And if it goes off the rails, as I learned last spring, so be it. Damn, you just, I think I ejected Mo. <laughs> I've been working with some of the same people for 25, 30 years. The energy with each other is what makes it work. I don't need to be the center of attention. Elvis Duran in the morning show. With 70 markets across the country listening, Duran's a rarity these days, a nationally known radio DJ. Growing up, I remember big name radio DJs. Now it's kind of you and Ryan Seacrest. That's about it. What happened? Radio isn't what radio used to be. A lot of radio companies gave up on personalities. They just wanted to play music. It's, it's cheaper. That's not good for our business. So I've done everything I can to keep personality on a radio show in the mornings. Whenever I've come into a room with you, I've walked out feeling better than I did coming in. Not only does this show remind me of home, uh, it reminds me of my beginning. And it's Duran's personality that over the years has won him loyal fans, including some of the biggest names in pop music. Lady Gaga grew up dreaming of hearing her song on our show. And when she walked into the room, she was sort of nervous. And I was thinking, well, should Stressed they be the opposite way? <laughs> it's Lady Gaga. Whenever she talks, I feel 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell Go her, ahead. Well, tell everyone why you're saying that. Because I used to listen to you guys all the time. But it's everyday listeners with whom Duran feels a special bond. We are in the friendship business. I think about you when you hop in your car in the morning. You're either leaving a house that may be full of turmoil or going to a job with a boss you don't like. But I have you for 20, 30 minutes and I can be your friend. When did you fall in love with radio? When I was a kid. I'd spend the night at my grandmother's house when mom and dad were out late and I'd listen to the radio and I became friends with this voice in the dark. He was just seven and growing up in McKinney, Texas. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I was a loner. And so I found friendship through the radio. And so began his quest to become one of those voices. I built my own little transmitter. <laughs> and what was your studio? Where was it? It was located? in my closet in my bedroom. <laughs> and my only listener was the lady next door. Duran's first real radio job came at age 14. It's Elvis Duran at Power 104. It's time to After go dropping out of college, he spent a decade yeah. bouncing between markets Guaranteed. across the country. Back in the old days in radio, you never unpacked. You never took dishes out of boxes because you're always moving. But you know what? I've been very lucky. I've been at Z100 since 1989, so I'm doing okay. While his show is based in the Big Apple, Elvis Duran's heart belongs in New Mexico. As a kid, he visited the land of enchantment frequently. There's so much to look at. I mean, with all these galleries. In Santa Fe, he's learned the art. Look around. Of appreciating art. 
so much of your life, certainly your professional life, has been about what you hear. Right. This is about what you see. But can't you hear this as well? It talks to you. Life out here is kind of quiet. The polar opposite of New York City is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Do you need that? Of course I need that. Santa Fe is, it's a magical place. And I think in some ways this city has kind of saved my life a little bit. It's good to be in a situation where you're forced to relax. <laughs> Duran and his husband Alex Carr share a home here, not far from where they were married in 2019. But decades before they even met and started dating, they spoke by phone. Where else? On the radio. I had him on as a contest winner once, but you, you won something. Jingle ball tickets. Jingle ball tickets. That was in 1998. How old were you? 18. Oh, God. Every morning at 2.30 a.m. <laughs> Santa Fe time, I, I slither up the this, this staircase. He often hosts his show from here. Thanks to a home studio, his commute is short. Is the Elvis in New Mexico a different Elvis than the Elvis in the New York studio? Oh, absolutely. And everyone back in New York has said to me at one time or another, you're so relaxed out there. We really like the New Mexico Elvis. Elvis Duran can't say how long he'll keep broadcasting. I appreciate it. To be able to do this this long with this family, it's, it's a miracle. It really is. But he isn't ready to mute his microphone just yet. He's still got a lot of friends to keep company. Thanks for listening to Z100. How much of this goes back to the seven-year-old you listening to that voice? All of it. You know, I'm not lonely anymore. I never, ever want to go back to being a lonely person ever again. And I don't want anyone listening to our show to, to be lonely. That's the legacy we're all trying to leave. I, I don't want them to remember my name. I just want them to remember how we made them feel every day. That's it. That's it.